Hello guys, this is Sean from Korea and today we are going to talk about quantum companies in crisis. So for example, we are seeing uh, D-Wave, Rigetti, Quantinium and Arcade Quantum in a hard time and we are also going to talk about which companies are doing great. So I wanted to make this video's name as Distinguishing Good and Bad Quantum Companies has started. So first to start off, let's talk about crisis to quantum companies. So from 2023 January, including 11 venture capital investments, big money has been flowing into quantum industry. So it seemed like quantum winter is unlikely to happen. However, few quantum companies are facing crisis. So for example, D-Wave is facing cash package, so it didn't earn much money as expected from SPAC. And also the stock price is plumbing from $10 to $1 and the lockup releasement date is coming. So the stock price is expected to go even deeper low. And the Rigetti, as we already know, 28% headcount reduction and technical roadmap, the most important thing in the quantum companies has changed. And the founder CEO, Chad Rigetti, resigned even before uh, his successor has assigned. And then CTO and CFO will be changed as well. And global companies, um, 다시 하겠, 다시 하겠습니다. And global, 다시 하겠습니다. And global quantum companies job posting has decreased from 800 to less than 400 in an year. So quantum should be regarded not as a sprint, but it should be regarded as a marathon. So even though it has big potential in the long term, but short term views are dangerous. So we should uh, invest in as having the long term view for the quantum uh, industry. And also quantum market will grow 20 to 30 percent every year as expected but not every quantum companies will grow at the same time so from 2023 to 2025 um, the reason why i set the 2025 as end date is because this year is expected to uh, have the error correction commercialized so leader group will be distinguished and the companies that fail will disappear so i expect Companies like D-Wave and Rigetti will um, will probably fail and disappear in the future because it's already showing some bad signs. And Quantinium, uh, which used to be Honeywell, CEO has changed. So on February 14th, Quantinium has appointed Raj Hazra as CEO, new CEO. The company said Hazra will help Quantinium its mission to accelerate quantum computing as it enters a period of rapid scaling. So it represented as a good thing, but I don't think it's a good thing because the current CEO and founder Elias Khan remains as the leadership team, but he is moved from CEO to chief product officer. So his duty has decreased and also as his, his influence. And Raj He's previously spent 25 years at Intel and he's an expert of hybrid multi-cloud infrastructure and getting the new products and partnerships. But even though, what I think is that replacing the CEO is pretty uh, extreme. It represents that the existing strategy is not working well and needs to be improved. So I, I think Quantinium is in risk as well, just like D-Wave and Rigetti. And also ArchiQuantum stock price drops dramatically. Recently, so February 17th, Arcade Quantum issued new shares warrants to secure more cash. So how much? 10 million new shares at $2 and 7.5 warrants at $2. So in total, $35 million, which is comparatively very big to the Arcade's market capitalization. So on the day when this news was released, ARQQ's stock price dropped more than 40%, and then February 18th, 4% declined. So before this, Arcade had $2.5 stock price and it's around $1.4 now. The reason why ARQQ issued new shares is that we could see this from the Q3 earning report. On Q3, ARQQ used 70 million out of 49 million remaining cash, which means it only has cash enough for three uh, quarters. So remaining cash is not enough to continue its business, so that's why it released new shares and warrants. So Arcade intends to use the net proceeds from this offering to enhance international customer service capabilities and to enhance the general corporate purposes and channel uh, partnerships. But what I think is that ARQQ has a big volatility on its stock price. Uh, for example, on November 2022, its stock price uh, went very high, even above $10, but currently it's around $1.4. So more than 87% stock price drop, not just once. I think it's like two or three times in a row. So I think it needs extra caution when investing 
because it, the stock price has such a big volatility. And on the other hand, Sandbox AQ is doing pretty well. It raised more than $500 million. So on February 16th, Sandbox AQ, a startup spun off from Alphabet last year, announced it raised $500 million. And what it does is it has a software that scans company systems to identify which parts uh, is out of date basically and identifies which needs to be replaced urgently and is intending to uh, fortify that part um, which needs to be fixed uh, automatically so that's what the ceo jack hitter is in intending for so he said that a lot of banks and pharma companies and governments still using old protocols so when quantum computers are out with error correction it'll be hacked so the average bank takes five to seven years to migrate over but the Sandbox AQ is uh, intending to do this very fast. And Sandbox AQ also has a powerful simulation software to accelerate development of drugs and materials. And it also has quantum sensors. So for example, it created a prototype machine to monitor the heart. And this can also monitor slight local changes in the Earth's magnetic field, so which enables the navigation systems to be much more precise. So as a result, it won a contract with the U.S. Air Force to research these quantum navigational technologies. And uh, you should know that the formal Google's chief executive, Eric Schmitz, is in the startup chairman. And he's also investing in Sandbox AQ. And it already has 15 enterprise and government customers and partnering with 30 universities to train uh, PhDs and other talent needed. So it's growing up very rapidly. And even though this uh, company originated from Alphabet in 2016, Google parent is not a shareholder because the hitter, the CEO, wanted the company to be independent to work with other major cloud companies such as uh, Microsoft and AWS as well so I really like what it's doing and from my thought Google's quantum hardware is not doing great its development is basically stalled so instead it's focusing on quantum resistant security and automatic uh, upgrading security upgrading solutions and quantum sensors by utilizing its AI and big data capability. So Sandbox AQ if it's listed I'm willing to invest in this company so I'm still monitoring how this company is doing. And uh, overall, my thought, 2023 is having a high interest rates, hard economic conditions such as uh, inflation. So quantum companies will or fail grouping has started. So D-Wave, Rigetti Continuum, Archi Quantum is having difficult times, whereas Sandbox AQ is getting big money and getting more attention. And also IonQ is doing pretty good because it's utilizing its abundant cash, which is over $555 million to acquire Entangle Networks, setting up uh, new manufacturing facilities around Seattle, and it's establishing global positions, already established one in Europe, Canada, and possibly in the near future. And also IBM, since it has a lot of money, is spending a lot of money to set up a quantum centers around the world to attract more customers. So it's, what it's trying to do is to... Uh, trying to be a standard platform for quantum, even though I'm not sure about their quality. So we'll see who will survive and who will not by 2025, because 2025 is the year when the error correction expected to be commercialized, uh, according to the INQ's technical map. So failing companies will go out of business because of the lack of cash. So as a quantum investor, we need to analyze not only my stock, such as INQ, but also the whole industry and the competitors as well. So let's remember that quantum is a marathon, not a sprint. All right, so we talked about quantum companies in crisis, DOA, Brigetti, Quantinium, Archiquantum, and those companies who are doing great. So the distinguishing between good and bad quantum companies has started, and we should monitor this trend and see which company is doing great and invest in that company for the long term. All right, thank you for listening to my video. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll talk to you guys uh, on the next week's weekly update video. Thank you.